Welcome back, Controls Champions, to the PLC Programming Cookbook. Today we're going to take another look at the classic example of a motor starter, and we're going to do it in structured text this time. So, brief overview from last time. This is the typical motor starter circuit in ladder logic. And the first thing I want to do is talk about how to do this in the same thought process in structured text. That's exactly what this is doing here right now. This is all just Boolean logic. And if we look back at the ladder logic, recall we had a start condition and stop conditions and then a latch, a latch condition where it keeps itself on. And to test this, I've just got a start button and a stop button and this light indicates whether the motor is on or not. So if we look at that in the structured text format, first of all, you'll notice I've got parentheses around the start condition and the latch condition. And the reason I do that is because when we've got two things in parallel like this, because of the order of operations, we have to tell the system that this needs to be assessed to be true or false before we continue the logic. So. When I push the start button, or if the motor is already on, that's gonna come up with a true or false, and that's gonna represent these two branches together. The next thing we're looking at is not stop button and overload, and it's and because it's in line like this. So, so that condition and not the stop push button and the overload. And again, in structured text, this is the assignment operator. It means we take the result of the formula on the right and we put it into this variable here. So again, this is identical to the logic that we see here, the Boolean logic. Same thought process, same approach to how to put it together. And let's just take a quick look at the simulation to show you that it works. I've already set this overload condition to true. Again, this uh, in this example, this means that the overload is not tripped. It means that we're okay to run. If I push the start button, it starts. See the light turned on. If I push the stop button, it stops. Light turned off. And let's just look at how this should flow, how we expect it to flow. Notice the stop push button is showing false. And so this, this color may trick your eye into thinking this whole condition is false, but that's not true because we've got a not in front of it. So when we combine the not with the stop push button, now this is a true statement. So and true and true. Once this condition is true, then this whole function will be true. And this condition in the parentheses will be true if the start push button is pressed or if the motor is already on. So I'll do this again, push the start button. Notice the start button is showing blue, is showing true while I'm holding the button. And when I let go, it's false, but because the motor is on now, this parentheses condition is still true. And when I push the stop button, then this not stop button will turn false, which means motor will turn false turn off and that means until I push the start button this parentheses condition will also be false so when I let go of the stop push button and this becomes true again we still have a false over here so we still have a false as a result of the whole formula so I'll push stop and again I'll just hold this for a second so you can see the stop push button is lit up blue it's true but because of that not in front of it that makes that portion false. And we could also represent this, maybe it would make it easier to understand if I put parentheses around this. This is identical function. And maybe this is just a little easier to understand what's going on here. This chunk and this chunk and this chunk. So we can go online with that and just see that it runs again. Push the button, it starts. I push the stop button and it stops. Okay, so if I pull back out of the emulator again, 
I'm going to look at a different way to think about this. So when I look at this, um, this makes sense to me, but I am also, uh, I have a, a lot of background in text-based programming. In fact, I've programmed in text-based languages longer than I've programmed in ladder logic. So this is familiar and comfortable, but for some people, maybe this is not comfortable, or maybe this isn't the way you want to think about it. It's certainly not uh, when I first start thinking about the problem that we're trying to solve, the I want to be able to start and I want to be able to stop. This isn't the structure that first comes to mind. So I want to show you another example, another option. In this case, we're more thinking about, hey, when do I want the motor to be true on? When do I want the motor to be false off? So now we're thinking about in this condition, make it on and in this condition, make it off instead of this Boolean logic in one line. And we're going to use if statements. So you've probably seen these before. If this condition is true, then do this thing until and if. If this condition is not true, then skip until after the end if statement. So inside of here, I've only got one line. I could have more lines if I needed them. But I'm saying, OK, what is the condition where I want the motor to be true? And what is the condition where I want motor to be false? Again, this is on and off. It's the same thing. So if we look back at this, just because it's more graphical, I'll use this as the example. When the start button is pressed, Oh, by the way, I'm going to come back here for a second. Because I'm saying if these specific conditions do this and if these specific conditions do this, this doesn't have the latching function like this. It's not self-latching. It only writes in the condition where it wants to change the state. It's only active where it wants to change the state. But this variable will keep whatever state we last wrote to it. So it's sort of self-latching. And you might think about it in ladder logic like a latch coil and an unlatch coil instead of a regular coil like this. So if we push the start button and we're not pushing the stop button and the overload condition is allowing us to run, then turn the motor on. Okay, cool. If we push the stop button or the overload condition is not permiss permissive, not permitting us to run, then turn the motor off. Pretty straightforward. Again, let's just run through the simulator so that we can see this run. Again, I've already got the overload in the permissive condition. If I click start, our light turns on, motor is on, it's true. And if I click stop, motor turns off, false. So I wanna take this one step farther this is maybe like a lot of, it, it. it's three conditions, it's not that much, but maybe it feels like a lot. We could possibly make this simpler. And I think in, in practice, we're often not doing it quite this way. We usually do our logic somewhere and then have the output somewhere else. So I have another example here for you. What if we simplified that first one and said, okay, whenever I push the start button, then turn on, this is, uh, I've, I've created an intermediary here, this output. And later we will write this output to the motor. So I'll get to that in a second. So if we push the start button, turn that output on, set it to true. And then we check all the stop conditions. If the stop push button is pressed or the overload is not permissive, then set that output to false. And because this is an intermediate, this isn't actually turning on or off any real outputs. The motor is the real output. So we're going to turn this on based on the start push button, and then we're going to turn it off immediately before it gets set to the actual motor contactor, if any of the stop conditions are true. So this just becomes a little bit simpler than this, where we had to consider all the stop conditions in that start condition. And like I say, this is most common. We're going to have, this will be somewhere else. We'll be writing to the actual output somewhere else, because usually this will be 
you know, we'll have some start reasons somewhere in a sequence or something like that. We'll probably even start and stop based on different sequences or different places in the same sequence. So to have that output run somewhere else makes a lot of sense. And it simplifies this condition. So one more time, let's jump into the simulator. Again, I'll point out I've already got overload is ready to go. If I click on the start button, notice that motor came on. And if I click on the stop button, notice it turned off again. So I hope that was helpful in being able to think through how to start and stop things. Again, this is a classic example. It may not be exactly what you see in, in every case in industry, but it's really a good foundational building block. And uh, so I, I hope it's helpful. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, let, let me know what else you're looking for. And we'll keep making these videos. See you next time. Thank you for amusing my American brother, John. He does so enjoy it when people watch his videos. Be a good chap. Share, like, subscribe, and comment. I'm sure he would be ecstatic to hear your impressions. Cheerio.